Hello, this is One Man Left, and today I'm going to do something that might shock some of you because I have a League Starter video for a non-mana build on a Juggernaut. I'm a level 89 Juggernaut right now, and the reason for making this setup was because I intend this League for my final build to be... A mana forged arrow juggernaut that is a mana stacker I'll go into this later but the problem this creates is that I have to actually like potentially league start as an undergeared juggernaut and that's not fun now I'll add to this I've been testing this with this plan but we just got patch notes and there's a lot of changes with Archmage so I might still pivot and do a high row start to test all the new Archmage stuff and then roll Jug later. But at least without that information, the plan is start Juggernaut, be undergeared, make a character strong enough that can boss rush Guardians on a low budget, and make money that way until I can buy an Indigod and then swap to Mana Forged Arrows and be powerful. To do this though, a lot of the starter setups sucked. I, I looked at, like, Righteous Fire, ZDPS. Just, it's just too bad. There's just no damage. I looked at Spells. I looked at Bone Shatter. Like, obviously, Bone Shatter's okay, but, like, I just couldn't get anything that I liked number-wise. Uh, however, recently, I did a little bit of testing with an Energy Blade video with Molten Strike of the Zenith, and I started to piece this build together because Molten Strike of the Zenith is... Honestly, the highest damage melee gem in the game, in terms of like damage effectiveness it can deal, uh, it's just better than every other gem by such a huge amount. But it's clunky because only every fifth hit does real damage. So you hit like a wet noodle for four hits, and then the fifth hit does actual damage. This is really bad for smooth gameplay, uh, but there is a way to smooth this out, and the way you do that is attack speed. The more attack speed you get the smoother Xanath feels. Instead of having something where you uh, only do damage every few seconds, you're doing that big damage hit like once per second, and now it starts to feel better. So I decided, well, what if I went Juggernaut and started to do a little bit of accuracy stacking? And that made sense. So Juggernaut has the node Undeniable, and Undeniable gives you uh, attack speed per 150 accuracy, some flat accuracy, and then it has the mod that says gain accuracy rating equal to twice your strength. So, okay, naturally I might start stacking some strength. I got 1,100. I don't have crazy gear right now. Uh, this le this gear, I'll have a POB linked, is supposed to simulate my day two or three gear. Um, so, 1,100 strength. I got some accuracy. Cool. What do I have, like 13k accuracy? Yeah, so this is 90% attack speed. That makes the Zenith attack speed feel really good. Then I thought, well, I can think of an interesting way to get a lot of damage that I don't really ever see melee builds use because it's a little weird to implement this way. But um, there's a really powerful mechanic to getting attack damage with Battle Mage's Cry. Maybe I'll show you guys a demonstration of this before I get into some demos. Um, let's, let's run a map. Let's run a, let's run a Phoenix map, alright? Remember, the goal of this, uh, character was to be able to do boss rush, destructive play guardian maps on a low budget. And I'll try that. And then I'll explain to you how I'm getting some damage. This isn't gonna, like, you know, blow Phoenix right out of his shoes and delete him. This is gonna be, like, you know... A little bit ethical gameplay, but uh, the first thing you might notice is I leap slam pretty fast if I don't like desync here. So I do pretty good. Sp oh my god, that's some damage there. I'm a pretty fast character. Uh, this is good for farming. You know, you, you want to have clear speed on League Start, right? Like, slow characters aren't cool. You want to make money. Your money is dependent on how fast you play the game. So, the faster you play the game, the better. Um, the accuracy stacker setup with Leap Slam is very fast. Like, obviously I have a speed trend right now. That's going to be a little deceiving for the video. 
But you'll see plenty of gameplay with me without it, and I'm I'm very fast. It's actually to the point where it's hard to control. Uh, so getting more gear actually makes it like a little bit uh, hard to even utilize this. But like, look at this birdcage guy. You'll see he just randomly takes chunks like once per second. Like he takes almost no damage and he takes a big chunk. That's the zenith proc going off. But uh, you know. I would say the total gear value I'm wearing... I do have a six-link weapon. Um, and I have two large cluster jewels. That's probably the most money. I would say my my budget pr right now is probably looking like around eight divines. Of like, not current, you know, end of league uh, uh, affliction currency. But my current budget is probably like eight divines on like day th two or three. So... You'll have to farm a little bit to get to this level, but, you know, obviously a lot of builds aren't gonna just sit there and just, like, you know, pound out Guardian maps too easy. Uh, but let's see how this Phoenix goes. Let's see if I can take this. Alright. This is alright. Like... We have, uh, the Destructive Play bosses joining in. So, I have not just, uh, not just Phoenix, but he's got some friends. But, like, you know... Oh, I got this guy. Who's this? Someone, someone's still up. Oh, it's the stupid totem thingy. Alright. So, the purpose of this character is to be able to boss rush guardians. Who's still up? Oh, I got them all. Uh, it's to be able to boss rush guardians. And to me, this is comfortable. Like, it's pretty fast. It's pretty tanky. Like, I face tanked the Phoenix the whole time, no problem. Uh, it's got good recovery. And it's got about 4 mil single target. But with, like, the strike skills target additional that you can get, that ends up being, like, 12 mil on 3 target or more. So it's just really, really good starting setup. So, you know, I've kind of described the Zenith setup for how that gets good damage with attack speed. But... There's actually a way I'm getting really cheesy damage right now. Okay. The weapon you might notice has a very interesting modifier on it. Now, obviously I'm not going to fracturing orb spell damage. But I thought this was kind of funny looking. Because I bought this for a few chaos. But. I have spell damage on my weapon. Why? Well. Since I'm strength stacking. I thought. Let's do something interesting to get a lot of damage. I'm using the Iron Fortress, which is giving the strength bonus is 3% per, fi per 500 now. Or per 1,000. Okay, 3% per 100. Okay. 1,000 strength is 300%. It's it's 0.3. Whatever your strength is, is 0.3 with the Iron Fortress. So let's look what I have. I have two sources of spell damage. I have 11, 8, uh, 38 times 0.3 for 341%. And then I have an Essence of Woe on this weapon for 143. So I have, from two sources, from Strength Stacking and, a, and an Essence, 484 uh, spell damage. Now, if, well, I'll go over the weapon a little more later, but you obviously don't need Fracture. The, 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 the cheap way to get this on League Start is you buy a sword that has, like, Fractured Flat Ellie damage on, like, a two-hander. Which people might sell for, like nothing you know maybe maybe after I, this video prices will go up i guess but like if someone had a reaver sword drop that just had like fractured t2 cold res they're probably vendoring it like that's actually gonna hurt the supply is people vendoring it someone might sell it for a few chaos then what you do is you take an essence of woe and you slam it on there a couple times until you hit like another flat ellie roll and then you're pretty much done because uh, what I really care about is flat damage and spell damage. And then I'm just going to craft the attack speed. The end. Uh, I'll go over weapon choices a little more. Like, this is pretty open. This is... There's a, there's a couple different weapons you can use. Uh, and a couple different mods you can use. You can just have triple Ellie instead of the spell damage. Um, it's about the same damage. But I thought this was kind of funny. Anyways. So... The Iron Fortress uh, increased spell damage per strength effect does apply to iron will strength bonus applies to spell damage as well so the iron fortress makes the strength bonus higher this also applies to iron will spell damage 
which is what is giving me from two sources 484% damage. Okay. Well, then there's this skill called Battle Mage's Cry, which essentially says that it takes your spell damage and at 30 or more power, which with Red Blade's guaranteed, uh, gives you your spell damage times 1.5. Okay, so actually with Battle Mage's Cry, that 484 spell damage from two sources, just from pretty much passive mid-gear strength stacking, like you could get to two or 3,000, but I have 1,100, whatever, is giving me 726% attack damage. Now you might think, oh, that's pretty good. No, 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 no. You can scale the buff effect. So we're at some War Cry nodes. And you get 5%, 8%, 8%, 20%. That's 41%. Okay. Uh, I'm taking Call to Arms right now, but um, next league, we get the Call to Arms support gem, which is actually going to make this whole setup better. Because I get this talent point back, I don't have to take it. And then I'm just going to drop efficacy for Call to Arms. So right now, I'm having the Weapon Swap Warcry, which might sound clunky, but I only have to do it every 13 seconds, and it's insanely fast. So, you know, anytime I have, like, downtime between packs, I'll just swap Warcry, swap back. If it's, like, a boss I'm waiting to fight, it's, like, you know, Shaper's doing his RP, whatever, it's just swap, Warcry, swap. I know that's annoying for some people, but after you see the damage that's about to do, uh, you might be convinced. Um, but that seems clunky-ish. It is. Once you're used to playing it, it's not. Uh, it takes a few minutes to get used to, but next league... Having called arms in this gem socket will lower the duration back down to about 11 seconds. But it will just be instant. I, I We'll have to double check how this works, but I believe the way that will work is you'll literally swap and it will instantly war cry. You won't trigger anything. Because it's off cooldown and called arms instant triggers anything off cooldown, I believe that simply weapon swapping will automatically trigger the war cry. So instead of having to do what I'm doing right now where I have my two-hander on and then I swap, war cry, swap, I think next league, the way it will work with that gem setup, is I literally just have to double tap swap. That's it. That's it. Every 13, every 11 seconds. That fast, and I get the buff. I, I'm i 90% sure that's how it will work. But if it doesn't, I'll go back to using it this way. But okay. You'll notice in my offhand here, I have infinite power war cry, so I always get 150. Uh, this all carries over through the swap. It, it stays. It snapshots. This claw is a cheap unique that gives 25 war cry effect. It also gives chaos explode and slower cooldowns on war cries. It's it's just all around good. Uh, so remember that 726 number. So I have 41 war cry effect here. So 141 effect, but then I have 25 on the claw, uh, and then I have. 8% here and 8% here from two of them on Lethal Pride. So, plus 16. So, currently, I have 182. Uh, I also have, there's um, Embers on Boots you can use to get some. This is a, a Tier 2 Ember, which is like a half chaos. Um, the higher tiers go higher. You can get like 17% effect if you use a higher tier. But I just... Uh, the, the pieces I have embers on are either... I think they're all lesser, and I think that's the only one that's greater. Like, my gloves are, du gloves are double lesser, helmets double lesser, boots are lesser greater. So I, I spent maybe like 40 or 50 chaos on, uh, on ickers and embers just to get these. But, uh, so that gives it another 9. So I have 191% Warcry buff effect. So remember that 726 number? It's that times 1.91. My Battle Mage's Cry is giving me 1,400% increased attack damage. And all I'm really doing is scaling strength, which is kind of what you do anyways with, uh, like, Accuracy Stacker. And it's giving me life, you know? I know this isn't 2018 anymore, where builds rock walk around with, like, 6k life. Everyone's on the cool 4k life build hype train. But just having a little bit of strength stacking while being in the the Marauder part of the tree, it's really easy to get a lot of life. So I already have, like, almost 6k at level 89. Um, by 95, I'd have about 7k with this setup. By 100, I'd have about 8k. That's kind of a just nice bonus is you just get a bigger life pool. 
Um, but yeah, it's a pretty tanky character too. I mean, it's a juggernaut. I, I have, uh, Unbreakable. I have, uh, Grace and Determination on. I have, currently my armor's only at 47k in hideout, but I have all these flasks at 3 charge on hit. Uh, you know, you can alt these yourself, you can maybe settle for 1 or 2 charge on hit, whatever, but, like, you know. With all my flasks up, I have about 80k armor. Which is pretty dang tanky for, like, all the elemental and, uh, physical damage. I am lacking in the chaos tankiness department, but maybe I would get the armor applies to chaos damage somewhere. Uh, but I just don't have that right now. So I, I am kind of weak to chaos damage right now. But everything else is super tanky. And like I said, the purpose of this character is basically to just, like, get rich farming guardians with destructive play. And outside of Al Hesman... I don't really have any chaos damage to worry about. Like, even Chimera is not that bad. Um, unless he's got some crazy boss mods. But all the other ones, I can pretty much just face tank, standing still. Real easy. Um, another thing for tankiness, too, is uh, I have a Watcher's Eye here. I paid 80 chaos for this. It's got the Vitality Life Gain on Hit modifier. There's a couple different places to get Life Gain on Hit. You can get it on a Shaper Ring, I think, or an Elder Ring. You can get, like, 18 or 16. Um, this, with Molten Strike, with Return Projectiles, with Striking Additional Targets, is such an ungodly amount of hits per second that this one modifier, even if it was, like, 10 would instant cap my HP like every fraction of a second. This is like infinite recovery. If I'm able to hit stuff, I pretty much have infinite recovery. Like if you watch that Phoenix there, it's it's just an absurd amount of recovery. I'm going to do some delve here in a second. And you'll see in delve, it's, it's a lot of recovery. Uh, so I've got pretty much infinite recovery. I've got really good tankiness right now to everything but chaos. But obviously gear can fix that, right? Like you get better gear, you just start getting chaos res on stuff. Simple. Um... And the damage is like 4 mil single and like 12 mil AoE. I'll go over this is This is a deceiving number because it's the Zenith hit, which is the big hit every fifth hit. It's basically like 28% of this number. Actually, someone called out on my Energy Blade video that it's technically lower than that. It's like 26%. So I'll just divide by 4. So like the real damage is like 333 three, three. But that's not factoring in return projectile. It's not. It's not like scaling that at all. Uh, and it's a little. Yeah. You can see like real demonstration numbers. It's around four mil single, and then every additional strike is like that many times more of that. I'm gonna do one just kind of tier 16 map just to give you one more view of like the the mapping, how that feels, and then I'm gonna do some uh, some delve demonstration. Alright, I got a Delirium Mirror. I might as well go up for it. Okay, the character is very fast. I honestly have a little bit of time. I think playing it more, I'd get used to this. But just not being used to the controls of, like, having this much Leaf Slam attack speed. I'm actually probably not fully utilizing my attack speed. Like, I think, I think if I doubled my attack speed right now, I actually wouldn't even be able to move any faster. Because I'm, 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 uh, operator limited. On, uh, on how fast I'm, like, actually controlling the character. Like, I probably don't even need movement speed on my boots, just because I'm leaping everywhere. But yeah, Zenith procs on, like, strike additional nearby projectiles is pretty nutty. It's, you know, three hits that all fully shotgun, and then the, the proc does, like, you know, over ten times damage. So, you'll see go in, you'll see this more in depth. Look at that rec- oh, okay. What was that? Well, we died. Alright, I don't know what that was. That might have been chaos scaling? I'm not sure. But you gotta kind of see the recovery there. The, like, crazy ping pong that can happen there. That's actually the first tier 16 map death I've had in a while. So, uh, was that some, exp was that like some DD thing? I actually don't know what that was. I have no idea. 
Well, they didn't get me the second time. Oh, that's not even where I was. I was up here. Holy cow. What is that? I, I don't know what that is. Oh, it's the lightning mirage. Oh, it's the lightning mirage, people. Okay. That's funny enough. That's what killed my jug in, uh... That's what killed my jug in Gauntlet. Why am I taking so much damage? Okay. I guess I do have Delirium on, too. With, like, a full Atlas tree for Delirium scaling. So this is gonna be, like, a 7 for Delirium on an Alcango Mirror. That, that, that's kind of a lot. Jeez. Yeah, the 7 Delirium layers was making this harder. It's boss mods, too. Alright. Well, this is probably not the best demonstration map for uh, flexing the power. Funny enough, that Phoenix died faster than this guy. Like, I just did a Phoenix that I just fully face tanked and then blew up, like, instantly. But the 7 Delirium Layer Strand boss with boss mods is actually tankier than the Phoenix. That's kind of funny. Alright. I'm gonna do a Delve demonstration here. Yeah, Delirium's harder than Guardians. <laughs> I'm gonna do a Delve demonstration here. Uh, to kind of show off it's a pretty good setup in Delve. I normally play, like, a Mjolnir Manabon League start. And that's usually a pretty good, uh, like, pretty good delve progression. Um, 600 delve is about when the money gets really good. But 600 delve is very hard. It's 14 times health and, like, more damage than 100 delirium. Uh, so you have to have a pretty strong build to get to 600. So, yeah. Yeah. I've seen, like, 100 Divine Mjolnir setups that are pretty comfortable at 600. But even, like, 30 Divine Mjolnir setups are having a rough time at 600. Uh, so this character killed Kitava, like, four hours of gameplay ago. And then slapped on, like, eight Divines of Gear. Let's see how that looks. Uh, I picked two nodes here I'm gonna try. Uh, so I picked... A 567 Harbinger node. If you're familiar with Delve and you'll see the fight, Harbinger nodes are very, very difficult. And this one's got some mods. So I actually don't think I'm going to beat this one, but I'm going to try it. If I don't beat this one, or if I do, I got another node at like 624 I'm going to try. That is like, I think I'm good. Well, we'll see. Okay, that's we, we don't we don't count that one. We don't count that one. I told you this is Hang on. I should just bum rush the node. This the zone it starts in is like way scarier. And I'm like getting I've been having crazy like desync too for the leap slamming. I think I think it's just having really high attack speed. With uh, with leap slam, desync's really bad in delve. You'll you'll see. I just stop leaping oftentimes. Like I can't I can't leap forward. Like I I don't know I don't know how to fix I don't know. I don't know if it's desync or if it's just I'm a potato. Holy cow, dude! All right. It's the D's. <laughs> All right. Like I said, I don't think I'm going to beat this node. But this is a heavily modded Harbinger node at almost 600. So this is an example of a node that would probably just break like a 30 Divine Mjolnir character. I will probably lose. Just to be clear.
I think Sigil would probably help her. Oh, we got a God Touched Rare, too. As you can see, the recovery is very good. Like I said, I'm probably taking a lot of damage here. But just the Molten... Oh, okay, there we go. Okay. The recovery is really, really good on uh, just a lot of targets there. But, alright. I, I think that was still, like, an accurate representation. Like, like I said, I don't, I don't beat that most of the time. I got about a little over halfway. But, like, to be fair, I think 50 Divine Mjolnir loses that like i i on league start by the time i'm at 600 on mjolnir i'm like over 100 divine budget just from the money i've made along the way and i skip that node on mjolnir uh let me let me go to the other node i was gonna try that's like a little easier than that where was it there we go i'll do this one this is a 624 now, this is, I think this is an accurate representation. I've I've talked about this before. I I think there's a like a sense of legitimacy in doing like one take videos because it's really really easy to cherry pick clips and make something look good. But like if you if you deliberately do things that you think are like borderline, you can do them or not, and then you fail, like that's accurate. That's an accurate representation of the build. Like, I, I could have very easily ran that node five times and won, and then shown the clip of me beating it. But then, like, that's cherry-picked, so that's not a good representation. So, like, I think it actually is a good thing to show failures. I think it's uh, more accuracy, you know. This one is the one I picked as just, like, a this is a 624 node. Um, but it's no mods, basically. It's just very easy. So, just, yeah. There we go. So that, that's a 624, just Necromancer ex Excavation. That's on the easier side of nodes, but, like, I don't think I ever dip below 90%. And I killed pr everything pretty fast. Like, that's what an easy node looks like at 620. So, yeah, I failed the very hard node, and I beat the easy node. I think that's an accurate representation. All right. Let me, let's, let's take one last look at the POB here. And, uh... I want to talk weapon a little specifically, and then, like, maybe end game scaling. My plan with this build is to change it into a Mana Forged Arrow build later. So, I'm not really planning on taking it to the end game, but, like, there's obvious, uh, you know, upgrade opportunities you have if you want to take this build farther. Uh, like, you know, you can get plus two strikes on gloves. That's, like, 33% more damage if there's four or more targets. You can run Nimus, and that doubles your damage. Like, you can drop the return projectile support for another support. And you can run Nimus. You can get enough attack speed with like 2,000 strength to run like Awaken Multi-Strike, Awaken GMP. Um, but let's let's talk weapon a second. So, this weapon has... Um, it looks funny because it has the Fractured Spell Damage. But like I said, the more realistic craft for this is just... just you, you just find Fractured Ellie. And then throw a Woe Essence on there until you hit another Ellie roll. Um, and then craft the attack speed as a suffix, and then you're done. But it's not that mandatory, because if, if I if I go to this, uh, this sword... If I just um, change the spell damage mod to, like, another, another mod here... If I just had this as cold damage... Like, what does this do to my damage? I didn't dish the 143. Uh, so now I just have it like a, an Ellie sword. Like, that's not actually that's not actually that ridiculously high, but it's a tier three mod with an essence mod with a fractured mod. Uh, what does that do to my damage? It's probably about the same. It actually went up. So that just shows that like tier one or two flat Ellie is comparable to the spell damage roll. But I wanted to try the spell damage roll. Uh, the other thing with that, but as you get more strength, you get more and more and more spell damage from strength. 
which as you get more iron will spell damage from strength that makes the relative value of the woe essence spell damage less and less so actually as you get higher gear um it becomes beneficial to probably get the flat damage again and in lower gear it's better to get the spell damage uh another end game option you have is the rakiata's dance sword um the ellie invert is just super strong on this like if you get like a slightly above average rolled one uh and add that it's 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 really good it's about the same flat damage a little lower uh but it's got the ellie invert mod and since this is like multi ellie it can't run pen but like watch the damage if i just swap to this sword 18 million so like that sword is 50 percent more damage uh than the sword i crafted and this sword right now is 30 chaos the important detail there is this is a tier zero unique um and we had a magic fine league so there's a lot of these swords out there that no one's using but right now it's a 30 chaos sword on league launch it would be more expensive however the redeeming quality here is it's the only unique on its chance orb base so you can just chance it with the omen so whatever the price of the chance orb omen is is the price of this sword on league launch worst case so if you did have this build and you're in like the 10 divine ballpark but like maybe you don't like your weapon or maybe you're trying to get it together and you're still in like like the three or five divine vault ballpark and your weapon sucks and you're looking for a weapon if the chance orb omens are only like two or three divines this is maybe a good option because this is like i said like this is this this is 50 percent better than that sword i made so like if you're if you're wanting to have a like a, like a strong mid game build for this that can probably push all the way into regular bosses probably not ubers maybe maybe by like 95 you can do ubers with this um this is a this is a good option for a sword just using the uh the chance orb omen but anyways i think it's a good league start uh it's obviously not just like you know blowing ubers out of the water because it's uh dumpster level 89 juggernaut with simulated day two to three gear but this is intended to take me into the mana forge setup which that is the build that will be blowing the uber's brains out while taking zero damage uh i'll catch you guys next time i hope you enjoyed my first non-mana stacker juggernaut build but uh i think it'll be pretty nice all league start